he's told us these things. The Prophet himself is a metric as well. So then you as an independent you as an they independent person. Yeah, you can just see the direction that they're facing. They're all picturing me. Yeah, yeah, don't worry. Because we can't hear you otherwise. The mic is so far. Yeah, it's not going to pick up. Well, that's all right. I Why don't you hold that in your hand? Well, I still have a dinner to go to. Okay. Oh, you yeah, have a dinner to go to? But thank you so okay. much. Just before you leave, just I will tell you one sentence while you are gone. You ask if the God know that we are after we die, why he judge us? Because he give us the choice what we are going to do. Then we are deserve, going to be deserved for what he is giving us or no. For example, you are a teacher, you know your students, who is good and who is not good. Are you going to give them all the same reward? Definitely no. You give the good one who worked hard the reward. The one who didn't work, he didn't deserve. That's why, because if Allah, God, put you in the place you said, no, but you didn't give me the choice. You choose because you know me, I am good or bad, and you take the decision without my choice. That's the point which I want to tell you. Thank Mike, you. nice to Thank speak to you. So, if you can just like tell me all of this, how exactly does Muslim or any religion come to have a so in Islam, we believe, just, remember I told you the four criteria and the last criteria was, and there is none like him. So in Islam, we believe that God is incomprehensible in terms of likeness to his creation. So we don't agree with the Christian notion um, that it was, uh, he was a man or the Hindu notion that he can be depicted in idols and stuff like that. That's why there is no image, there is no picture. And that's why, Mike, most people resonate more with the Islamic point of view because of what you just said. That God, if he is all powerful, all seeing, all hearing, then surely he wouldn't you know, imitate, imitate a weak, prone uh, creation like us. Because even, you know, our hearing ability, you know, even we can see in a certain spectrum, isn't it? The visual spectrum. We can't see the infrared spectrum. We can't see, you know, um, yeah, radio waves and the likes. Even hearing, we can't hear, you know, what bats hear. Or dogs. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Even dog whistles. So stuff like that, like, that I, I agree with the inference that you were saying that if we are a weak creation, then why would God be like us? And I agree with you. I, the Muslim notion is God is unlike his creation. And because of that will, uh, sorry, Mike, yeah, as Muslims, we're so confident that we invite you when you go home, even in your, in your bedroom, you're by yourself, you raise your hand in whatever way is befitting to you, whatever way you feel you can, and you have that connection with God. Because if that God has created you with uh, Mike, then he doesn't need me. He doesn't need a priest, a pastor, an imam, a rabbi, Muhammad, peace be upon him, Jesus, peace be upon him, whoever it is. You have that, and this is as Muslims what we say, Mike. That if God has created you, you have that connection with God. And that's something that you don't need to, even if you were to accept Islam tomorrow and move wherever, Coventry or something like that. We're so confident that we don't require money, we don't require, you know, uh, you know, let us tell you this or let us do No, you have that connection yourself. Because as Muslims, we believe, Mike, everybody is born with an innate disposition. And this is some... Every religion has its teachings and even the Quran, right, that is So if God is something that is like, it doesn't have any flow, where does those values or, you know, teachings go? It's like a person that's created a microphone. Yeah, the, the person that's created the microphone knows where, you know, the electric current will go, which circuit board to use, which this, which that. And again, that comes from intellect. Yeah, that's why one of the attributes of God is the all-knowing. Yeah, so if someone's all-knowing and they can't give us values, then there's a contradiction in terms there, isn't it? Yeah, that you can't assume that he's all-knowing. And that's where the point is, Mike. If you compare Islam with other faiths, 
Because surely if something's from God, it should be comprehensive, isn't it? Yeah, it should be accessible. And that's what we say as Muslims, that the scripture that we have dates back to the time of revelation, where no other ancient religion makes that claim. The language with which you read the Quran is a living language. Um, and thirdly, by memorization, the Quran is mass memorized, whilst the other books aren't mass memorized. So the revelation is the point here that God that has no shame revealed itself? Yes, yeah, so revelation is a means of God communicating with us and sending messengers. So that's how God communicates with us. Because obviously, if God shows Himself to us, then you know it doesn't make sense like uh, of course you're going to believe because you've seen god yeah it's the same in an exam mike if, if i give you the answers i can't assess your intelligence so i have to leave the answers blank i leave the answers blank and then i let you through your rationality through your cognition through your practice you then infer the answers to the best explanation that you have and then you are graded at the end you get time to revise, you get professor time. It's, the professor is somebody who knows the field. Our professor is the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. You get to read the primary literature. The primary literature for us is the Quran. So just like that, people, why didn't God just, you know, give us, why didn't the examiner just give us the answers? Well, if he gave us the answers, it's not really much of an exam. So similarly, Mike, if God gave us the answer, then it's not really much of a, a test or an examination. And surely, and this is what it's good, and I hope that you do feel confident enough to do that, because we're very open, Mike. Surely somebody who's claiming that, you know, this is the message from God, if you ask a few challenging questions and we go, oh no, that's, a, that's not very appropriate, isn't it? So if we're claiming to present to you the truth, then surely it should stand against rigor and should stand against criticism. So we're saying also that even what Islam came, it came with five things. It came to preserve life, to preserve religion, to preserve intellect, to preserve family values, family life, marriage and wealth. And you will see this. This is something that is integral for society to function, Mike. You are seeing family values breaking. You're seeing people, you know, Promiscu uh, promiscuity is spreading, sexual harassment is spreading. Now, why is sexual harassment spreading? One statistic is four out of five British women have been sexually harassed. Four out of five is a YouGov poll. Now, that's, that's one aspect. Islam says, you know, keep your gaze low, cover yourselves. Even the men have the hijab as well. Men cover themselves is an obligatory part in which we cover ourselves. There is a way in which we approach the opposite gender and we get married. Yeah, there is a way in which, you know, the system takes place when you go against that system. You know, you start promiscuity becomes rife, marriage breaks. If marriage breaks, then you can look at these studies. Studies suggest children that come from broken homes, children that come from broken homes are more likely to cause issues in society. Those people that aren't married, you know, it causes heartbreak, then results to trauma. And then, you know, a person spending so much time in counseling and then issues come further on in life. Do you see? So these are the five things that Islam came to preserve. And you will see this in society, Mike. And you will see why Islam is saying, look, this is very, very important. Because me even asking you as an agnostic, Mike, can you prove to me what is right and what is wrong? There's no way. Now, if you think about this, Mike, if a person can't prove what is right and what is wrong, you can't now say that a neurosurgeon is better than a bum sitting at home, drawing circles all day. For you, you have to say they are both the same. A neurosurgeon, <clears throat> a doctor, you know, these people that are saving people's lives, it's the same as somebody sitting at home making circles. Why? Because there's no right. There's no wrong no value. and becomes chaotic. And that's why, Mike, we do need to reflect on these questions. And these things are very important and you're more than welcome. And you should ask as many questions as you want, Mike, because we do need to get to the bottom of this, because if we don't, Mike, what happens is no right, no wrong. Pedophilia is OK. Necrophilia is OK. 
bestiality is okay, murder, rape is okay, do what you want. And again, the thing that you're probably going to allude to had we had more time is probably the Benthamite principle or the John Stuart Mill principle of if pleasure is more than pain, therefore we say it's advantageous. But again, I'm sure you know there's holes in the argument as well. That if you constantly go for pleasure, you, the word that you rightly used, used was hedonistic. And hedonism, we're knowing in more uh, studies that are coming up, it's actually detrimental for us. Hedonism. What do you think about what I've said about the values that Islam is offering as opposed to the values that you've heard elsewhere and even society lacking right and wrong? No, no, go ahead, yeah. Sure, sure. Like other religions also offer a set of values. So, what's your view on other religions like this? Islamism would be the only true religion, or would other religions also be bad? The, the thing is, the Islamic view with regards to other religions is they were valid once upon a time to a particular civilization. Like as Muslims, we, not, we have no issue with Jesus. In fact, we believe in Jesus. If we were alive at the time of Jesus, we would be following him. Certain you know, people that have come possibly, we don't know, Con Confucius and Lao Tzu and all of these individuals because you know, China you know, really respects Confucius and Lao Tzu and you know, these sorts of teachings. We don't know because there's a lot we don't know about Lao Tzu. We can't say definitely that maybe he was a prophet at that time, who knows? But what we, we believe in Islam that God did just leave us here. He created us and just left us. He gave us guidance through prophets and messengers. There's an ayah in the Quran. Yeah, yeah, he says, yeah. every nation has been sent a prophet. Yes. yes? And they came to warn. They came to guide. And this is how we know. And like Brother Zishan was saying, maybe at one point, these religions, other religions which have different names today, were the true religion at one point. Until they got corrupted and people started adding things and removing things from it, and it got distorted from the true message. Yes? Because if you read the Bible and you read the Quran, you realize that there are many prophets and messengers which are the same in both the Bible and the Quran. But why, why do we say that Islam prevails over all religions? is because we still believe that every prophet, every messenger, by definition, was a Muslim. What does Muslim mean? One who submits to God. One who submits to the one true God. Yes? So we believe that Abraham, Moses, Jesus, all these were prophets of God, and they were all Muslims. By that definition, Islam means submission to God again. So the true message from the very beginning, from the first man and even before that, has always been Islam. Yes? So, so essentially the belief system is that every prophet is a follower of God and thereby they yes. are a Muslim. So the, the prophet... Yeah. Not only follow a God, they actually represent God on earth. So, like, just like an ambassador in another country represents the king or the prime minister or the president in that country, because whatever they say in that country, it reflects back on the president, isn't it? So God has to choose, and these people who were chosen, they were the right, righteous people, not some any Tom, Dick and Harry. But bear in mind there was a chronology, like Moses was there, he was given a book because he said Quran. Moses, we believe he was given the Torah, also known as the Old Testament, but we believe it got changed after Moses passed away. Then God sent another revelation and that was sent to Jesus, peace be upon him, that we call the Injil, nowadays it's called the New Testament. Again, that was corrupted after Jesus was raised. Yeah, and finally, the final testament sent to mankind is the Quran with the final prophet, Prophet Muhammad. So we believe they were correct once upon a time, but the principles, uh, and there's, there is some truth in them. However, there's been interpolation, things that have been added and things that have been taken out. And if you look in terms of what is there today, Islam gives you a comprehensive set of values, which is only befitting of something which comes from God. Otherwise, Mike, there will be holes in it. In fact, the Quran says in it, in there as well, that it, had there been contradictions in it, then it would be obvious that it's not from God. 
So those challenges are there in the Quran. And if we had more time, we could have delved into prophecies and stuff like that. And that's called scaffolding of evidence. And, and that's finally, what we finally, we believe that Islam is the right religion of men because any question you have, we have answer for it in Islam. So now when you go home, even in Google, anything come in your mind, put it, Google it, you will find answer in Islam for it. That's the challenge, which is you can find it in any other point. Have you read the, have, have you read the Quran, by the way? No, I have Would you like a free copy in English? Uh, I'm good, but thank you so much. Okay, no take problem. care, Mike. Take care.